Hi, I'm Joe Theismann, world champion quarterback and entrepreneur, and I have the pleasure to sit here and visit with one of my dear friends, James Malinchek. Now, James, you are the behind the scenes go-to marketing expert for many of the top athletes, speakers, and authors in this country, and you really teach people how to speak. You also happen to be the only speaker trainer that's been featured on Secret Million on ABC show The Secret Millionaire. I'm absolutely fascinated the more times we spend together just how much you have an influence that you have had on so many different people. How did you reach the point where you have trained speakers now? Well, Joe, first, I never planned on it. You know, I was just a guy out there hustling, you know, booking talks. I just always wanted to be a fee-paid speaker because I love speaking and I love impacting people. When people come up to you and say, man, you changed my life or you said something that uh, made a difference or I didn't want to come to this talk, but I'm so glad I did because, you know, I believe that, that I was here today to hear that message. You know, you can't put a price on it. I love that. But uh, when I started out, everybody told me, just speak with passion, have a story, and you know, just be a messenger, have a message, and everything will be fine. And I was, but I was broke, living in a $400 a month apartment in Los Angeles. And by the way, that included all my utilities. So try living in Los Angeles on 400 bucks a month, and that includes your utilities. No, you can't do it. <laughs> right, you can't. It's right? gonna send you someplace else to do something, right? I was eating top ramen noodles. I could, I could tell you 50 ways to make ragu, <laughs> dilute ragu with noodles, right? And I was working in a video store at night to pay my rent, because I, I just listened to everybody when I was starting out. You know, they say, just you know, have a message, just tell your story. And what I realized was if I could not get booked, then I would never have a message to tell my story and impact those folks. So I, the smartest thing I ever did was I stopped studying speakers and authors because most of them actually weren't profiting. They weren't monetizing their message and I started studying the best marketers. And I went to marketers in every industry and I just found commonalities of what worked for them and I just brought it to my own speaking business. So what happened was I went from literally here to there. I went from like no bookings and to a it, ton of bookings. And it really had to do with, you're very, you were a very good speaker, but nobody really knew. Nobody and knew. And you me. believed in what you were saying. You had people coming up to you saying, boy, James, you really changed my life. It made right. an impact. So that's the reinforcement we need, that <laughs> right. we always appreciate that validation message, and reinforcement. Yeah. But yet you were locked in this little tiny world. Why well, couldn't get booked? So how did you get, how do you, you know, so how do you go about becoming uh, more of an expert on marketing than anything and saying, okay, this is who I am, come and let me speak to you. Well, I figured out a couple things really quickly about the speaking industry. Number one, there's two sides of it. There's always two sides to the coin. So in the speaking industry, you have side number one, which is your message, your impact, what you do to make a difference. But then on the flip side of the coin, you've got the business. And this is no different than running a dry cleaning store, any kind of manufacturing plant, an internet business. I mean, we are running a business. It's called the speaking business. Most people run a speaking hobby. And that's why they never actually get paid and, and, and compensated for what they're worth. So that was the first thing. The other thing I figured out really quickly is that if nobody knew about me, they couldn't book me. Right. Right? You know, so I, I see people who have books. Best book in the world doesn't make a difference if it's sitting in a garage, if nobody knows about it. Right best speaker in the world, most impactful message. It doesn't matter. If nobody knows about you, they can't book you and you can't profit from delivering that message and making a difference. So what had happened was uh, I started having all this success because I became a marketer and, and it's very simple. I just figured out who the people were who controlled all the budgets and I got my marketing materials to them and got them to pick me over other folks. Now, when did you decide because you are a speaker trainer. Yeah. When did, that's exactly what you are, who was featured on ABC's hit series, The Secret Millionaire, I might add. When did you decide that you wanted to take that information, that ability to speak, and now share it with others? When did, when did that epiphany come to you and say, whoa, I can do this? It actually didn't. I didn't wake up one day and say, I want to go teach this, because I, I was somebody just doing it. These folks who found out about me started, people who wanted to be speakers and who were speakers but who were struggling, found out about me and said, man, hey, you didn't fall off an airplane and live. You didn't win a Super Bowl. Right. No, excuse no, me. You're right. No, you're right. <laughs> you didn't have a movie made about your life. Right. You don't have a best-selling book, and yet you're out booking most of these folks. 100, 150 dates a year I was doing. Right. They were like, how do you do this? And they were at high fees. And I just started sharing it with them, and then I got smart because it became overwhelming. 
So I, I threw a boot camp together, an event, way back in 2001. I've been teaching this for a long time. Sure have. You know, and, and where it's grown now, I mean, you've spoken at many of my events. We have over 700 people that come oh, from all over the world. And, and you know what's amazing, too? And this is the thing that I think is so important for people to understand. They aren't all new people. Because what you're teaching, you might say, well, I've, I saw James, you know, in 2007, or I saw him in 2011. Why would I go to something in 2013? Because every time I attend one of your boot camps, I think, and this is the way for a lot of people that come back continually, is there's always something more to learn. Oh, absolutely. And, and I will say this, and, and this is going to sound a little egotistical, but my speaker training is the world's greatest speaker training. I will put it up against anybody's on the planet. And you know why? Because I teach you, how do you actually get paid? I mean, how do you profit? How do you package your time, knowledge, experience, and expertise? How do you get to the people who control the budgets for corporations, colleges, exactly. associations, youth organizations? How do you actually get paid doing what you love? Right. You know, and, and most of the trainings that I have seen, and, and I respect everyone's training, but uh, a couple of things, a lot of the people who are out there teaching these trainings actually came through my trainings. Sure. You know, which is kind of... The teachers have a teacher. I guess, I, yeah, I guess the... You the, can the, say it. It's, the, you can say it. The it's biggest true. form of flattery is when people you teach start teaching exactly. your stuff. Exactly. Or people that you coach <laughs> go yeah. out and, and, you know, we, see, we hear about, you know, the Bill Walsh tree of coaching, mm. the Bill Belichick tree of coaching in the world of football. You talk about the people that, they, that have worked under them and they go out and they start to develop... It's very similar to you. Right. You know, you're the head coach. You're the guy that everybody looked at and said, as a speaker, I want to train under somebody. I want to be trained by someone that I can go out and, and go on my own and start to understand what James has done. And I think it's it's wonderful and it's it's a you know, like you say, it's the finest form of flattery. You know, you mentioned something about Secret Millionaire. People say, Oh, you were so lucky to be on that show. Over ten million people watched you from around the world and all the things that happened to you because of the show. First of all, I say, Well, thank you, but I was blessed. I mean, it was a true blessing, but I was booking a bunch of talks and out booking most speakers way before anybody even knew who I was from some television show. Right. You know, and so this is all about a system. This is all about a blueprint. This is all about how do you take your time, energy, your knowledge, your experience, your message, your story, and how do you actually get paid doing that? That's what nobody taught me, and that's why I struggled so many times starting out. Well, I'm curious too, as a speaker, if, when you sit down and you teach people how to speak, what are some of the important elements initially? Say, take someone somewhat of a novice, they're just starting, they, they want to learn from you. What's the, what are the first two things that you tell them? Well, the very first thing is you, need a, you, you do not need a brand. Everybody thinks, well, I need a brand. No, you don't. You know, you've got Nike, you've got Starbucks, you've got Apple. They go out and they buy brand awareness. They've got hundreds of millions of dollars. They can just go buy up a marketplace. You and I, we're probably like starting in our spare bedroom. <laughs> right? Most speakers or start. Or a garage. Or garage. You see garages now. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. I mean, think about it. Most speakers start, yep. you know, as a, as a single person, maybe with an assistant, right? You need a unique and right positioning that matches the marketplace you're going after. And here's one of the biggest mistakes most people make when they start out in speaking. They say, I am going to go talk on topic ABC or XYZ. And that's fine, but what if the coordinators who control the budgets don't book that topic? So what you need to do is you need to think like the coordinator, the person who is writing the check, the person who's picking speaker A over speaker B, and you need to create all of your unique and right positioning and packaging and your promotion material, promotional materials around what they want to book, not what you think they need. Okay, you've got to come from your customer's point of view, and your customer is the meeting coordinator who's choosing who picks the speaker to come in for that respective audience, whether it's colleges, corporations, youth groups, nonprofits, whatever that might be. What do you say to people out there that are saying, you know, James, you have a great idea, a great concept. I'm afraid to do it. I'm, af I'm afraid to do this. I have a story. I have a terrific story I'd like to share with people, but I'm afraid that my story won't be accepted. You know, what do you, what do you say to people who live with that fear of not being willing to take that step? Well, first of all, it's natural. You know, everybody has fear. I mean, you and I were talking uh, yesterday and you still get nervous before you speak because sure. you want to do a good job for the audience. Right. right? I still, I've done over 2,000 talks. I still get nervous before every single presentation. But for you looking to maybe uh, want to get started speaking, the very first thing you've got to understand is that the way you think about how you're going to progress now in your career might not be the right way to go. Yep. So you may be creating 
business cards, marketing materials, writing a book. And a lot of times when folks come to my speaker training and they think logically from a strategy point of view, uh, from a marketing standpoint, from the meeting coordinator's point of view, we got to change everything that you started because that will never, ever, ever get you booked. So people, you know, it's like, would you, if I wanted to be a broadcaster, you were a broadcaster, yep. would it be smart for me to go and learn from somebody who's been there, done that, and who's still doing it, or should I just go wing it? Invaluable. Yeah, Invaluable yeah. to spend time with someone who's been there because you're going to make mistakes. I made a bunch of mistakes already. Mm -hmm. Take my experiences. Let's eliminate those mistakes and let's speed up the process for you so that if you want to become a broadcaster, keep everything in sound bites. Make sure you do diligent work. Prepare yourself. Understand, learn how to pronounce names correctly. Those are things that you don't think about when you first start in. And I was curious because I, I, I love talking to you about speaking because both of us are very passionate about sure. it. And I, I've been doing it since 1982. Mm -hmm. After we won the world championship, I started getting invited to a lot of different functions. But I even go back further than that. In 1969, 1970, when I was at the University of Notre Dame, I don't know if you remember what you got paid your first speech. I remember when I got mine, it was called breakfast. Yeah, I got a, I got a chicken dinner. I got <laughs> breakfast. I, mine was cheaper than your chicken dinner. So we all started from somewhere. And I, I, James, I have spent a lot of years with you recently, over the last five or six years. We spent a lot of time together. We've talked about a lot of different things. I think people make a mistake if they don't take advantage of what you have to offer. Because it's simple to understand. And if you're going to attend a boot camp that you have, Right. I ask you to do this. Don't come in with any of your notes and your preconceived notions. Come in with a blank pad. Matter of fact, you'll provide them with a workbook. Oh, I call it the, the, Bible, the Bible of the speaking it, industry. The Bible of the speaking industry where you'll be able to find the information you need and then you sit down and you become diligent about note taking. I think also one of the things that's so important in speaking is understand your audience. Hmm. Know who you're talking to. Yeah, I mean, that, you, that, you talk about the meeting planner on one side of it, but also once you finally get in the door. Hmm. For example, simple little thing. People in the financial business do not call their customers customers. customers right. They call them clients. So when you're speaking, you want to make sure that you're speaking the language of the customer that you're addressing, the corporation that you're addressing. Find out little things about the company, maybe a new product. Make sure you pronounce the company's name correct. Little things that you share in your boot camps, people don't even think about. Oh, well, here, here's one for you. Most people, when it comes to fee-paid speaking, they book a talk, they sign a contract, they fax in the contract, they go deliver talk, <clears throat> excuse me, get the check, and they say, okay, I, I did it. I, I teach seven ways to get paid. Seven ways to Besides get paid. Besides just that one check. Yeah, that's just one right. of the seven. One, there are seven total ways that my students learn to get paid from every single engagement. And that's what I teach in the boot camp. When I work one-on-one -on -one with someone, I teach that. We design that. How to get paid before you even show up in the form of, of continuing education material, something you and I are working on right now. Your two books, right. a DVD program, an audio program, and, and your income will increase significantly just by having taking what you know here and putting it out in different methods of learning, different modalities, so that, see, your speech will, will end in an hour or 90 minutes, and that message is going to live off. Right. It's going to fall off, right? But what allows your message to live on and get passed on and make a real significant difference are the books, the CDs, the DVDs that they can take with them so that when they're having a bad day, they pull that CD out, they listen to it, and it picks them up when life knocks them down, or they read your book. And by the way, if you happen to make a little bit of a profit because you packaged your knowledge and experience into continuing education, God bless you, you should, because you're running a business. That's, and then it goes right back to what you said before. You learned it was a business. You, yeah. need, you need to take, it, it's one thing to have a game plan. And, and we talk about this at times. I've never seen a bad game plan. Never <laughs> seen one in my life. I've only seen lousy execution. <laughs> That's exactly what it boils down to. You need to be, you need to have an action plan. You need to basically say, I'm going to do it now. When I finished the outline for my book, we talked about it for five years. I'm embarrassed, but it's something people ought to know. For five years, you and I talked about doing a book. Joe, you need a book. Joe, you need a book. Joe, you need a book. Finally, I made a promise to you. You did. I said, James, I'll deliver it to you in December. I will have it there. I finished it that morning, granted. Right. Yeah, I but I that. delivered you an outline on stage. Right. And I said, this is the outline to my book. And we've moved forward since then, come up with another idea. 
It's amazing, once you develop an action plan, once you learn the philosophies and concepts that you teach, the doors open up, oh. the floodgates open up, the information that you have can be shared in a lot of different venues, like you said, seven different ways to that's be able to make money. That's just one you know, money-making opportunity that comes with uh, packaging yourself the right way. I mean, if you want to start a coaching program, I teach you how to start a highly lucrative coaching program. If you want to run your own seminar, I mean, I, I've run hundreds of my own seminars. We're getting 700 people to a speaker training. That's a speaker training. That's a very unique niche. 700 people register. And we, and we talk about it. It's the number one fear. Okay. So number. what you're doing is you're getting 700 people from around the world, from around the world representing over 40 countries now. And, and dealing with the number one biggest fear that people have. And you know why? When they come to our training, it's called the you know, Big Money Speaker Training, bigmoneyspeaker.com or collegespeakingsuccess.com. They learn how to actually take that, that gift, that story, the thing they want to do, which is go out and make an impact on people in the world. The reason why most don't do it is because they can't financially support themselves, and that's what we teach. Right. I said a long time ago, when these folks asked me, hey, would you teach us how you do this? I don't want to learn from these famous speakers because they're making it because they're famous. You're just an average, everyday, I say, look, I'm just a steel mill town kid who did some things right. How the heck did you do this? And when I started laying out my, my ABC Connect the Dots foolproof plan that works, it's a blueprint, anybody can use it. And guess what? You're going to impact more people when you can uh, sustain yourself financially and you're not stressing out about bills. See, I think one thing that people are, are interested in, I know I am, and they should understand, is you didn't start as this speaker to corporations. Oh, gosh. You, no. went, you were a college kid. <laughs> and you basically took the environment that you were in and said, I'm going to start here. You started speaking basically at colleges. I started speaking for colleges and universities. I had no idea how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did 70 or 80 talks for free before I actually found out they pay you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, here was my deal. I wrote a book called From College to the Real World. And it was all about street smart strategies from me, a C student, so that uh, students could land their dream job and be successful. Well, I thought, man, if I write the book, everybody's gonna just call me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and you know what? I got one call. It was from Mr. Visa and said, hey, uh, we need you to pay your bill because you're delinquent. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized something early in my speaking career, Joe, no one gives a darn about your bills but you and the people you owe. Right. And I said, wait a minute, I have to do something to get rid of these books and pay my bill. So I started cold calling colleges around Southern California and I would go speak for anybody that would let, here was my plan. If I could speak and sell five or 10 books here or there, Man, I do this 50 times, I'm rich, <laughs> right? Sure. Well, I did it about 70 to 80 times. And when I found out that there are actually tons of coordinators, something like 10 to 17 departments at every school, and there are over 4,000 colleges and universities, I said, wait a minute, I only need about two or three a month. And so check this out. I went from zero talks to being one of the most highly in-demand college speakers, and it wasn't because I was good, it was because that I knew how to get to the people who controlled the budgets. Yeah, but I want to tell you something. I know in all humil humility you say you weren't good. People don't ask you to come back and people don't ask you to go someplace if you don't have something to share and don't do a good job presenting Yeah, it. yeah. I so mean, you, I was an average were, speaker. But you got better and better and better with it. That's another thing people well, have to understand. Well, and that's what I want people to understand, though, is that you don't have to be a great speaker. It's one of the things that holds people back. Yeah. I was just getting to people who never been marketed to before who had budgets, therefore they had to pick me. You can do this and you'll get better as you progress. I got better as I went along. I'm very honored to say that I was two-time college speaker of the year by, <clears throat> excuse me, two different groups. And it wasn't because I was like such a great speaker, it was because I had a program that was changing lives of kids. But here's the more important thing, it was being booked so many times because of the marketing that I had so many votes, I had to win. <laughs> it wasn't because I was a great <laughs> you stuffed the ballot way. box is well, what you did. No, I mean like in essence, you did. You stuffed yeah, the ballot box with marketing. your presence and your marketing. Yeah, yeah. You know, Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen, co-creators of Chicken Soup for the Soul, heard what I was doing. They approached me, asked me to co-author Chicken Soup for the College Soul with them. This was just all from me marketing and getting out there, speaking a lot to help kids, having a lot of kids being helped. I mean, the emails and the letters. But here's here's the key point. Had I not learned how to market, I never would have gotten my message out, my story out. I never would have touched the lives. I never would have met these kids. And I would have still been working in a video store eating top ramen noodles at night. <laughs>
You're the best. You can do this.